If you are one of those people that believe that Oklahoma and Texas were being conspired against by the Big 12 and its remaining member schools to keep them out of their final conference championship game before leaving to the SEC in 2024, Tuesday did nothing to change your mind. And let's talk about it. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Hall of Fame College Football. I'm your host, Jason Watkins. And if you love college football, you know you're in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss one moment of Hall of Fame College Football. Yeah, the Big 12, if they were trying to combat this narrative out there that... There was a conspiracy to keep Oklahoma and Texas from playing for the conference football championship in their final season in the league in 2023. They didn't do anything to help combat it on Tuesday. When they changed rules for the tiebreaker with just two weeks left in the regular college football season, and kind of move the goalposts concerning certain teams if they were to win out versus lose a game here or whatever. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. We're going to do our best to try to unwind this. I think that there's been some information out there that it's been kind of slow to get to us at this point. Some of the earlier reports as of last night, even from guys like uh, our buddy Jay from Unfair Sports, I think it's through no fault of his own, the information that he had, he reported it absolutely correctly. I think the more that we waited on into the night, if the information that we got later from guys like Tim Fitzgerald and Brett McMurphy are actually how it really, the rules were changed, it will more screw over Kansas State than it will Oklahoma State or possibly Oklahoma if certain things fall the way they do. Even the calculator that was uh, used by a lot of folks out there reporting this story had to be updated to correctly predict the championship game qualifiers at the end of the evening. So I, I think a lot of this, again, we're going to, the best thing that I could probably do is just kind of let you know how it went from start to finish yesterday. Hopefully we get clarification sometime today here, Wednesday. And, uh, and hopefully the league has to admit how bad it looks for doing this. It's a terrible look. It's a ter no matter what, the truth really is changing rules mid season, not a good thing. Even if it's a clarification of the rule rather than an actual change, which is, I think what it was being pawned off as it still looks terrible. As I said, I don't know if it's incompetence or truly foul practices trying to ensure that you do not get these two departing Blue Bloods playing in the championship game in their final year in the league. Which looks better, incompetent or dirty? They both look bad. But it's time for the league to own it either way. Let me see how I can, you know, kind of let you know how this went down. Now, I do want to preface this with saying that any number of things can happen. There's still, you know, a lot of football to be played, two games uh, for each program to finish off this season that could have a lot of impact on, that either will have a lot of impact on it or none at all when it comes to 
different scenarios that we're talking about. Um, but the one of the ones, one of these scenarios that most people are believing that you're going to end up with would be something like either Texas winning their final two games, which is on the road this weekend at Iowa State, then at home in the final week of the season, Thanksgiving weekend against Texas Tech. That would automatically qualify them. But then having three teams also win out, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Kansas State, and remain tied for the second spot in the conference championship game. Now, according to the rules as they were read up until yesterday when Barry Trammell caught this, the what we believed would uh, qualify, in that case, Oklahoma State for that second spot in the championship game really wouldn't if what you read from the bylaws on the Big 12 website were to uh, be interpreted correctly. That is, the reason for that is even though Oklahoma State has played both Oklahoma and Kansas State and beaten both Oklahoma and Kansas State, Oklahoma and Kansas State have not played each other, and Oklahoma State never played Texas. So the head-to-head stuff, according to what the way it's written currently, throw those head-to-head results out the window and would actually have put in Kansas State for some reason or other. Uh, and and let me let me see if I can uh, make this easier for you to again assuming all three of these currently two loss teams were to win out and Texas won out and just stayed at one loss Texas would be in but rather than going to common opponents of all three teams in which we expected that a head to head matchup would uh certainly take precedence over, you know, if you've beaten a common opponent and somebody else lost to them, then automatically you're going to be that second one in. That would apply to Oklahoma State because they beat both KSU and Oklahoma in the season, right? But because of the fact that Oklahoma hadn't played Kansas State and Texas had not played Oklahoma State. You go to the next set of teams down that you have all played. All three of the tied teams have played, which in this case would be UCF, Kansas, and Iowa State. Um, in which case, in that, in that scenario, then you have K-State beat all three of them. Um, Oklahoma lost to Kansas and Oklahoma State lost to UCF just this past weekend. So Kansas State would qualify for the second spot in the conference championship game. I hope that is not too confusing. The reason for this is as it was written, and you can see here uh, on this, um, this is from the website. First and foremost, they're showing on the head-to-head best cumulative win percentage in games among the tied teams. You can see it starts off not looking good. If not, every tied team has played each other, which should say if all teams that are tied have not played each other, go to step two. Step two says record against the next highest placed common opponent in the standings based on record in all games played within the conference proceeding through the standings, which is, and that is further explained by saying when arriving at another group of tied teams and comparing records, use each team's win percentage against the collective tied teams as a group prior to that group's own tie-breaking procedure 
rather than the performance against individual tied teams. Uh, according to Brett McMurphy from Action Network, um, who tweeted out later on, the rule was updated to say if multiple Big 12 teams are tied and one team holds wins versus other teams in the tiebreaker, then that team wins the tiebreaker, which that sounds like Oklahoma State. That would be Oklahoma State. But if you're reading what this says, this is a rule change because what that in pink right there tells you is that it's the cumulative of teams that you've all three played, being UCF, Kansas, Iowa State. Now, Oklahoma beat Iowa State, as did Kansas State. But Oklahoma State lost to them. Oklahoma State also lost to UCF, while Kansas State and Oklahoma both beat UCF. But then Kansas, assuming that Kansas State does its job and wins out, which this weekend is against Kansas, if they were to win that game, they would have won all three games. Oklahoma lost to Kansas two weeks ago, and so Kansas would get the second bid if Texas were to have won out. Now, if Texas loses one of these games and is also tied at the end uh, with two losses, then you would have... <clears throat> And let's say you have, uh, there's actually a calculator that we can go through and show some of this, which I believe is what you saw on Jay's show earlier. That calculator had to be updated to be correct. So uh, I'm not going to show you that at this moment right now. Now, the rule that was changed was what we see in just red right here, right? That says any teams that are tied, if one team holds wins versus the other teams in the tiebreaker, then that team wins the tiebreaker. In that case, Oklahoma State beat both of the other two teams tied. They get that spot along with Texas, who just has the one loss. If Texas were to lose again, that would change everything up because Oklahoma has a win over Texas. There was no game <coughs> between OSU and Texas. There was a game between Texas and KSU. It appears that Oklahoma would get in on the head-to-head, -head, but I don't know. It's it, You would have to go down and look at these, these other games. It's very confusing. In any event, <clears throat> it's hard to really get a good grasp of what it is because this is not the way it's been explained all season long, and when you read it, it definitely doesn't read well. Now, so again, as the rules were written on Tuesday before the reports got out there that they were changing this rule or clarifying this rule, Oklahoma State would not get in even by virtue of beating both of the other teams they were tied with for that second spot in the playoff or in the, in the championship game even though it makes sense that since you beat both of those teams, you should be the other one in there, you know, and this is hard for an Oklahoma fan to say that. According to the way it's written as of Tuesday, before the apparent change of the rule, which I believe did happen because it even changed that calculator that we've been talking about, uh, And I and I did confirm that with the guy that made it uh, himself. And let's let's go through that a little bit here. Now, again, I did um, before I made this video. I made sure last night to go ahead and confirm with Imred uh, on Twitter that this had been updated with the newest information based on Brett McMurphy's tweet, uh, which you can actually see. Um, well, let me toss it up here on the screen as well, right here. You can actually see that as well. Uh, that, as Brett said,
the Big 12 title game update, uh, tiebreaker update. If multiple Big 12 teams are tied and one team holds wins versus other teams in the tiebreaker, then that team wins the tiebreaker, a source told Action Network headquarters, first reported by Barry Trammell earlier in the day. This may come into play with OU, OSU, ISU, and KSU, all of whom are 5-2 and two in league play. Big 12 ADs have regularly have a regularly scheduled call Wednesday and are also expected to restate intent of the tiebreaker. There's no change in our rules, source said. Head-to-head results take precedence similar to industry standards. So essentially what they're saying is what I was trying to get across a minute ago, and I don't know how well I did that, was that the way that it had been being portrayed all this time without reading it, you thought that head to head was the most important factor in, and in, in, in the case of what you read though, a few minutes ago, and it's still up there on their website as of right now, uh, at, at the time that I'm making this video, that is not the way it reads by reading that, that rule. Now, because let's let's go through and see now now that this calculator is actually and it's a great calculator by Imred it was beforehand it was <coughs> actually interpreting the rules as they were and as they are currently written he updated it to go by what we were talking about head to head taking precedence and this is the way it would go as we said if Oklahoma were to win its game this weekend. Texas wins its game this weekend. Kansas State wins over Kansas as well. The uh, Baylor TCU game doesn't matter. You can pick either one. UCF one wouldn't matter. You can pick either one. Oklahoma State wins in Houston as well. Uh, this game wouldn't matter in this in this instance. Uh, as and I know these games, some of these did before this. Um, then the next week, you have Oklahoma winning again over TCU at home. Texas holding off Texas Tech. This one doesn't matter. This one doesn't matter. This one doesn't matter. Kansas State wins over Iowa State to remain at just two losses. And then Oklahoma State gets a win over BYU at home in their final game. Then calculating the standings, you would have. Again, Texas, Oklahoma State in the top two positions and playing for the conference championship game. Now, as us Oklahoma fans have talked about, Oklahoma State losing a game, going to that third one, whether it be OSU losing a game or Texas losing a game would change things. Let's just start with Oklahoma State, who I believe is more likely to lose. Uh, especially after what we saw uh, a week ago at USF. <clears throat> if they were to lose that game and everything else stays the same, let's calculate it again. Then it becomes Texas, Oklahoma by virtue of uh, you have a head to head win between Texas and K State. Uh, and according to this, it says, Oklahoma is above Kansas State based on winner percentage against the one team that all played once, uh, which would be hmm, above Kansas State based on, which I guess would be, oh, Iowa State. Yeah. No, Kansas State beat them as well. Above Kansas State, based on winning percentage against number one teams. Oh, the number one teams. Oklahoma gets in because it beat Texas. Kansas State misses because it lost to Texas. Duh. Okay. So let's go back and do it another way. <clears throat> let's say, let's go back and say OSU wins out. Texas loses to, say, Iowa State this weekend. The rest stays the same. You calculate it again. Kansas State and Oklahoma are now in. Because even though, uh, wow, even though Oklahoma State beat both of these teams, hmm. 
with Oklahoma above OSU and Texas based on winning percentage against number five teams, which would be Iowa State, all of whom played one time, the number five team, so Iowa State. Above Oklahoma based on winning percentage against number six teams all played one time. So the number five and number six, Kansas State would have beaten both of them. Oklahoma is below Kansas State based on that winning percentage against number six, but above Oklahoma, OSU and Texas based on winning percentage against number five teams and all that all played one time, which is one and oh. This is assuming that Texas lost to Iowa State. And then we know that Oklahoma State also lost to Iowa State in the first conference game of the season. So that would is what would there's your head to head, you know, or, or the next one down the line that would kick them out there as well. So again, Texas has to continue winning to stay in over Oklahoma if they continue winning. Okay. Now, if Oklahoma, let's go back and do this again. If Oklahoma were to lose, say, to BYU this weekend, Texas, and Texas lost, everything else stayed the same. Let's look at it again. Then you get Kansas State, Oklahoma State, Texas and OU both miss. I believe that Texas basically needs to win out uh, in order to qualify for this championship game. As long as, let's see, Oklahoma, yeah. What about if Oklahoma beat BYU and lost to TCU and Texas lost to Texas Tech but beat Iowa State? Let's try that. Okay. So Texas, as long as they beat Iowa State, if they were to lose the week after that, chances are they would still get in. Um, it says with Kansas State above OSU, uh, based on winning percentage against the number five team, which is Kansas. Um, above Kansas State based on head to head, okay. And then OSU below Kansas State and Texas based on winning percentage against the number five teams, which is Texas Tech. One and one. And above K-State based on head-to-head because they beat them. So it would be Texas OSU in that. Yeah, that essentially comes down to head-to-head in this scenario. Now, in the way that it was being, the way that it's written, though, that is not the case. And yeah, I would tell you, you got to go back to what you were seeing both uh, in the... Uh, in Jay's video earlier, as well as um, the guys there at uh, Sooner Scoop as well, um, talking about how they clarified it as well on what was actually written. In that scenario, as I said, you would actually, uh, it would all, it would come down to games from UCF, Kansas, Iowa State, and Kansas State beating all of them. You know, th- that would change things up. That calculator has been updated as of right now. Uh, I couldn't show you that on the calculator uh, at, at this very moment. But if it were still that way, it sounds as if the, the rule has been changed. Now, this in and of itself, folks, is a problem. Okay? This is a problem because of the fact that, look, um, this is the middle of the season. To be honest about it all... I'm, I want to err on the side of doing the right thing by the teams. And if this is what they've been preaching all the whole season long, then that's what you hope they do, right? And it gives you a, a clear picture of what you need to do in order to get into this championship game if you're Oklahoma, Texas, Oklahoma State, or Kansas, right? It tells you what you need and where you need help to get in. Now, truth be told, though, the way that it's written should be the way that it's applied as far as the rule is concerned, and the rule should not change until a year from now. And if you're Kansas State, you got plenty of reason to be pissed off. If you're Oklahoma State, you would be plenty of reason to be pissed off if it was written the other way 
And you probably feel a sigh of relief if you can win out, which, again, I'm telling you I don't think that they will. But all you got to – you still control your destiny by winning. Oklahoma doesn't. Oklahoma needs either Oklahoma State or Texas to lose in order to – and plus still has to win out in order to get in. Kansas State is going to need losses as well. Right? That's just the way it is. That being said, you should not be able to change the rule in the middle of a freaking season or with two weeks left in the season. And this, like Tim Fitzgerald said, is a rule change. It would still look very bad on (laughs) the Big 12 if they didn't make this rule change because Oklahoma and Texas would be screaming to high heaven about it as would OSU for that matter. But I think you could still do the same thing in any event. Is it incompetence or is it malice and trying to finagle their way around the rules and change the rules mid-season to try to get the result that the conference clearly wants, which is neither team playing for the conference championship and certainly not both. We're going to find more about more about that out today when the clarification is made during their regular meeting when this apparently will be brought up. But... According to what we're seeing from Brett McMurphy, it appears that it was written badly at first and it's a clarification, but it's still a rule change. Clarification being in air quotes, obviously. In the end, if they don't just clean up the language and make it what they've been pushing is always going to take precedent, which is head-to-head matchups, What is this thing going to look like then? Could look worse. It could, it could look like what we saw Jay in his video talking about how UCF, Cincinnati, blah, 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 are going to have something to do with this last game because of the fact that the way that that rule is written, which is very poorly, as I said. Uh, and when you look at this, I mean, when it says, I mean, the very first thing, if not every tied team has played each other, go to step two. It should say, if all teams tied have not played each other, go to step two. That's terrible, right? And then even the other one, when arriving at another group of tied teams while comparing records, use each team's win percentage against the collective tied teams as a group prior to that group's own tie-breaking procedure rather than the performance against individual tied teams, which would say against a group of teams, not just head-to-head versus with Oklahoma State, say, K-State and OU. They beat them both. They should be in. That's not the way that that reads. So what what way do they go with it? According to what McMurphy said, they're going to go the way that I just showed you. According to what folks were thinking yesterday, that's not the way they're going to go. We're going to find out today what the truth is. Make sure that you share this around. And and look, either way this goes down, I don't know how easily we should let you gotta you can let the Big 12 off the hook for this, no matter who you are. Somebody's getting screwed no matter what. And it's because either of incompetence, which I think that the, it looks to me like that more than it looks like truly trying to screw anybody because in the end who really was going to get screwed more than anything else. If it played out the way we're talking about with everybody winning out, Oklahoma state was going to get screwed. And now because the rule changes back to what everybody intended it to be or thought it was KSU gets left out in the cold. If they went out, even if they went out without help, right? Uh, <laughs> that may be the thing that may be the most fair thing, but it doesn't make you feel any better if you're a Kansas State fan. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. 
And, uh, you know, get out there and uh, let Commissioner Yormark and his people know what you think about it, too. Uh, tweet at them, send them email, whatever. Let me know what you think about in the comments and share this with your friends. Uh, I hope that I was able to provide a little clarity. I don't know that I did, but but we'll see. And uh, But anyway, we will see you on the next one.